Today we have a super simple beginner friendly tutorial in Blender. I'm going to be showing you how to use Blender's built in cloth simulator to make some helium balloons like this that float. And it's just a simple little simulation, very easy to do and the modeling is that easy as well. So we'll mainly focus on this, the helium balloons, and then I'll quickly just do an overview on adding the background and the materials and the lighting. But the main focus here is obviously the simulation. And this method you know, has its limitations. But if you're looking for some quick, dirty balloons to add into a scene, maybe you're doing like a birthday animation or a party or something, then these are fantastic and are really, really simple to do. So let's jump in into Blender, it's all you'll need, and let's make this. So what we're gonna do, we're in a new scene in Blender, we're gonna select all the default objects, and we're gonna press delete. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna go to Mesh Options, and we're gonna add in a UV sphere. Once you add in a UV sphere, you're gonna go into your front orthographic view by hitting one on your number pad. And what we're gonna do, we'll just tab into edit mode. Let's come up here and enable proportional editing. And then just select the very bottom vertex here, right there. And then you're gonna go G and Z, and with your proportional editing, you can pull this down. Now you can roll your middle mouse button to increase or decrease the influence. So the shape of the balloon is up to you, but I'm gonna go something like this. I think that kind of looks good. Some balloons are a little bit more like avocado shaped. It really just depends on the type of the balloon. There's no one necessarily correct style, but this is what I'm gonna be going with, keeping it really simple. And then I'll turn off proportional editing. And then what we're gonna do, we're just gonna select this vertex and go X, and delete the vertex. Then we're gonna go Shift, Alt, and left click to loop select this edge. And then all you have to do is go Control F, and then just go to Grid Fill, and it'll fill it in. Then in your bottom view, um, you can roughly kind of just go to the bottom, or you can press Control 7 on your keyboard. So Control and then 7 on the number pad. And then over here under your Grid Fill, if you want to, you can just kind of come to the offset and rotate it till it kind of lines up straight like this. But this is just something simple to do. And then what you can do is go over to your smooth options. And then with the smooth tool here, just kind of smooth that out like that. That's it. And in the bottom view, um, you can just select the vertex here in the middle. Just click on it. I'll just go back to the move tool for now. And then with that vertex selected, go control plus to grow the selection. And then go shift, alt and S and just kind of round it out, shift alt s, then E to extrude, S to scale. And then in your front view, you can just kind of, once you've extruded that a little bit, just kind of bring it down. And then E to extrude and S to scale a little bit. And you're kind of just making the string. And then you can just go E to extrude, S to scale and extrude that down as long as you need to make the string. So I'm gonna go with something like that. And then what you can do is you can, if you want, just delete the bottom faces here with them still active. And then just come in here, the stick here in the middle, go Control R, and at the moment it's just a stick, it's got no um, topology, but if we kind of go Control R, you can see the yellow line here, and you can keep rolling, and just roll your middle mouse button to add in a whole bunch of segments. So I'm gonna keep rolling and rolling until I have about this many. So you can see we've got a whole bunch of topology now, like so. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our X-ray up here, Let's just select just the bottom verts. Let's go over to our object data properties and go plus, and then just assign those verts. So now we have this group. Then we're also gonna to go to our um, materials tab. We're gonna go new, and let's just call this red. And let's just go plus and go new, and let's just call this string. And let's just grab all of the stuff that makes up the string. And I'm in the X-ray here. And then with that string selected, I'm gonna go ahead and assign. And just so I can see it, I'm gonna go down to the viewport display and just make the string dark. And the red balloon I'll select, and I'll just go to the red, the display here and make that kind of a red in the display. So now we have this, and I'm gonna to toggle off the X-ray. And in the front view, I'm just gonna go G, G, Z, and move it up. Till it's kind of sitting on the floor like that and the origin points at the bottom. Doesn't really matter too much because it's gonna be pinned where our group, vertex groups is anyway. So that's where it's gonna be kind of mounted. So we're gonna go back into object mode. We're gonna right click and go shade smooth. Now let's go over to our physics. Let's give it a cloth. Let's scroll down and enable pressure. Let's give it a pressure strength of 10. 
And let's just come down to the collision. And if we want more than one balloon, we'll enable self collision so they interact with each other. And we also want to go over to the shape and select that pin group so it doesn't just float off. Now, if we were to actually play this, if we go to frame one and play, it would just fall, and that's because gravity isn't acting on it. But to make it look kind of like a helium balloon, we're going to cheat by going down in our physics. We're going to go to the field weights, and you can see we have gravity here. We're just going to type in minus one. And now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, you're going to see the helium balloon floats. How cool is that? So what we can do now, and this is the fun bit, we can go into edit mode and we can duplicate this. And inside of edit mode, we'll grab that bit at the top. We'll go to our materials, we'll go plus, and let's just create a new material, let's just call it green. And we'll assign it to that. And you can make as many colors as you want. I'm just gonna go with green for now, All right? So I've got these two balloons. And then I'll select everything here, the whole balloon. And I'm gonna rotate it kind of move it down so it's at the same point here at the bottom. But what I'll do differently here, I'll enable proportional editing. I'll make it connected only. And then I'll make sure just to select the balloon and I'll just kind of move it and have it a little bit of a different height. And then what I'll do is I'll select this whole balloon here. I'm gonna go shift D to duplicate that and I'll move it over here. Once again, I'll grab that same balloon, kind of adjust it a little bit. Maybe start it off in a little bit of a different position. You can kind of see where we're getting at here. So just select any bit of the mesh, Control L to select the whole thing, and then just Shift D to duplicate, rotate. I might pop one in here. And I think at this point, you kind of see what we're doing here. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go back into object mode, and I'm gonna go over to the physics. And let's just come to frame one, let's hit the space bar. And you can kind of see this is how it's looking so far. So yeah, that kind of looks right. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the cache and over here, you can see we have 150 frames. I'm gonna go with that. And so it matches our timeline here by default. And I'm gonna go ahead and just under the cache, click bake. We have it, it is now done caching. And you can see here the balloons are kind of moving around like this. Now you can mess around with the cloth pressure if you don't want them to be quite as bouncy, you can also mess around with the gravity. Um, but I kind of like just seeing the dynamics like this. So what you can do, once you have your balloons cached, is you can go to the front view, you can go Shift A, you can add in the camera, and then just move your camera back in the scene. I'm gonna go to my camera properties, give it a sh something like 150 on the focal length, move it even more back, and then I'm gonna go into my camera view by pressing zero. And I'll kind of place it here, just so it's seeing it from the front on like this. And then I'm gonna go Shift A, I'm gonna go add in a plane, I'll rotate it 90 degrees on the X. I'll scale it way up like this and just kind of move it into the background. And I'm gonna do this pretty quickly because the main focus is not really that, but mainly just the helium balloons. And under the rendering, I'll change it to cycles and under the render max samples, you can go for something like 45, should be fine. Then if you go Z and you go rendered, you can go Shift A, go to your light options, add in an area light, move it up, and then maybe go for like a strength of like 2000, increase the size, and you kind of duplicate that light, have it kind of coming off from the side if you want. You could do whatever you want. And then just select your balloons, go to your materials, and then let's just give that green material under the base color a green, because the other material we added was just a placeholder and bring down its roughness to make it glossy. And then I'll grab the red and I'll do the same thing. Bring it down like so. And I'm gonna grab the background and I'm gonna go give that a material. I'll make it black like so. And with the balloons, you can give the strings any sort of color that you want as well, um, whatever you wanna do. But this is kind of what I'm gonna go with. It's very simple. So now you can see we have our simulation here of some balloons. Really, really simple stuff. So what you can do now is you can go to your output. You can go to your output properties and select somewhere on your computer. And then under your file format, you can change it to FFmpeg video. And under the encoding, you can change the container to an MP4. 
So now if you go to render, you can render this out as an animation. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you next time and thank you for watching.